Hi, my name is Margaret Bean. And I'm Julia Arredondo, and this is our business analytics project where we'll be discussing finance versus quality variables. Today we are going to cover our exploring, testing, and confirming section to result in a policy that we have created. The questions that we wanted to answer through exploring our variables, testing hypotheses, and then confirming those hypotheses are what is the relationship between patient satisfaction and finance, and also which types of hospitals have the best financial performance. As you can see, our chosen hypothesis is high overall hospital ratings lead to higher operating revenues. And so we conducted um, the exploring section to create a hypothesis development in order to test it to make a policy to improve this hypothesis that we concluded. So these are our variables. Since our initial questions are related to finance and quality, we picked hospital, financial, and patient satisfaction variables in order to explore these variables to create a hypothesis to test in our testing section. We added an additional variable, owner, because we thought it would be more helpful in developing our hypotheses. For our financial variables, we adjusted these numbers based on bedside of the hospital. This makes the data more comparable. And as far as patient satisfaction variables go, we they're pretty much based on the patient's perspective of the hospital, such as surveys and how they rate the hospital from one from zero to 100. So nurse communication, they would rate it zero to 100 of how well they thought that the communication was. In our exploring section, we looked at univariate analysis and bivariate analysis in order to come up with some hypotheses to use for our testing section. So based on our chosen hypothesis, our univariables are adjusted operating revenue and overall hospital rating. So adjusted operating revenue are earnings generated and accumulated before taxes and interest are taken out. Again, this is adjusted based on bed size. So as you can see on the graph, most hospitals operating revenues are at between 15,000 to 1,500,000 ,000 as depicted on the graph. And so through our statistics, we notice that the average operating revenue is 1,000,000 $33,589. So a definition of overall rating is pretty much a combination of several quality measurement aspects of the performance of the hospital. So overall rating is pretty much based on patient satisfaction of the hospital. It's performed on a linear scale ranging from 1 to 100. So we found out based on our statistics that the average rating is approximately 88%, yet the majority of the hospitals have an overall rating of about 90, as you can see on the graph, seeing the highest um, bar. So moving on to our bivariate analysis based on operating, uh, adjusted operating revenues and overall ratings. Um, it is evident that operating revenues per bed increases as the patient satisfaction and experience is reflected. Um, as you can see on our scatter graph, that the regression line shows this positive correlation. Um, so it's going up. So as the overall rating increases, then operating revenues increases. For our hypothesis of element, we created eight hypotheses at the end of our exploring section to test in our testing section. The ones that are italicized 
1 through 6 are the ones that we actually tested in our testing section. In our testing section, we ran a regression on our chosen hypothesis in order to see if higher ratings in fact do cause operating revenues per bed to increase. We found that 23% of adjusted operating revenue is explained by our variables. We also found that if there's a 1% increase in overall rating, hospitals will make $45,366 in operating revenue. Therefore, our regression supports our hypothesis. Before going to the policy stage of our project, we wanted to ask a few questions why our hypothesis needs to be improved or changed. So why are overall hospital ratings leading to higher operating revenues? And so this is linked with patient satisfaction um, if a hospital has lower overall hospital rating, it's less likely that a patient will want to return to the hospital. So, and also patients will be less likely to refer friends and family, which will therefore hurt the hospital's revenue because less money is being received because of this poor overall rating. Um, it may be because of the way caregivers, physician, nurses, PAs, work with the patients. Um, that could be another cause to why hospital ratings lead to higher operating revenues. So how can we change this? We tried to focus on this change internally because before we can engage into the community externally to bring more patients into our facility, we have to fix what is inside of our hospital to bump up the hospital ratings, you know, to fix any issues going on with these low rating hospitals. So we found a technique called mentoring, education, and engagement. It's called MEE training technique. And Julia will further talk about the details towards this training technique and how it will impact our hypothesis to improve hospital ratings to increase operating revenues. The MEE technique was created by the University of Missouri Health System. It was developed to create an effective training program to improve staff to patient communication and to further assess the impact on patient experience and satisfaction. Their overall goal for MEE was to help foster the interpersonal relationship between patients and the hospital staff to then lead to improved patient and employee satisfaction. There are three phases to the technique, preparation, training, and implementation. The preparation phase will assess best practices and areas of improvement. The training phase will focus on hands-on training and role-playing to improve interpersonal patient communication. Hospitals will also enlist a patient and family-centered employee engagement trainer from HR to improve teamwork and morale. The last stage is implementation, which will include daily observations and monthly meetings to discuss how ratings have changed and how to further improve patient satisfaction scores. So the reason that we wanted to implement MEE for our staff training is because it's proven to be highly successful. At MEE's initial implementation location, patient satisfaction and experience scores increase substantially, as you could see in the graph here. In order to further confirm our hypothesis and prove the effectiveness of the MEE technique, we'll conduct a nationwide experiment. We expect this experiment to continue to support our initial findings, however, there is a chance that our hypothesis could be disconfirmed after analyzing the results. Our population will consist of the total number of registered hospitals in the United States, which is 5,534. We'll use a simple random sampling method to extract our sample and ensure that each hospital has an equal probability of being chosen. Our sample size will be 180 hospitals. After randomly selecting our sample, we'll then randomly divide them into two groups, the experimental group and the control group. Each group will contain 90 hospitals each. 
In our experiment, we want to implement a pretest and a post-test design. That way we can reduce noise and confounding variables during the experiment. So both group one and two will receive the pre and post-test. These tests will both be identical surveys that evaluate patient satisfaction and overall patient experience at the facility. Each survey will also be altered slightly to fit the facility and the organizational needs. So during our experiment, only the experimental group will receive the treatment. So group one will receive the MEE training while the staff in group two won't receive any training at all. This will ensure that we get clear results to compare after providing the training. So we wanna see if there's an improvement, diminished results, or no change at all between the surveys. So after obtaining our results, we'll move further to uncover why we got the results we did. So here's a depiction of what our experimental design will look like. R being our two groups, O being our pretest, X being the treatment, and then the second pair of O's being the post-test. So we expect that the MEE training will improve patient satisfaction, therefore improving overall ratings of the hospital. And what we found in our testing section is that an in, a 1% increase in overall hospital ratings would generate about $45,000 in operating revenues. So in order to implement our policy nationally, we wanna see at least a 2% increase in overall hospital ratings, therefore increasing operating revenues by $90,000 per bed, which in our opinion is extremely substantial. In conclusion, we think that you should invest in our policy because it would not only boost patient satisfaction, but also improve employee satisfaction as well. This is an affordable technique that is a quality improvement mechanism that improves interpersonal communication between employees and patients, resulting in increasing overall hospital ratings and therefore increasing operating revenues.